Oh my gosh, Tina. Like, is it seriously true that John's condition has gotten even worse now? Ugh. I heard things have only gotten worse. So I had to make sure it was true. I mean, seriously? Yeah, Jenny. Unfortunately, he has gotten worse this weekend. They had to rush him to the ICU for his health. But hey, right now he's doing a lot better and he has been moved back into his room. The doctors are keeping a close eye on him. He was even able to have small conversations again. Wait, what? Are you kidding me right now? He was able to make some kind of miraculous comeback from that? I can't even. Huh? Why are you acting all surprised? It's good news, you know. Uh, um, well, yeah. I guess it's good news. I mean, I'm really happy to see he's made a comeback. Or whatever. It's just unexpected, you know? Yeah, I get it. It's been a roller coaster of emotions for all of us. But hey, here's the thing. It's going to take some time before there's any hope of him getting out of here. So, do you think you can find some time this weekend to come in and see him? He's been asking about his grandkids, and it would really boost his spirits. And who knows, it might even speed up his recovery. Ugh, Tina, seriously? I don't want to go see him. Hospitals have this disgusting smell that just makes me feel sick. It's like... Gag me with a spoon? No way I'm stepping foot in there. What? Are you for real? Jenny, this is your own dad we're talking about. He's in a tough spot right now, and he would love to see his grandkids. It would mean the world to him. Ugh. I know he's my dad and all, but hospitals just freak me out. And have you seen how thin people get when they're really that sick? It's like they're wasting away. It's scary, Tina. I can't subject the kids to seeing their grandpa in that state. They'll be scarred for life. I swear. So? So that's what this is about. Then how about just you and your husband come to see John this weekend? Just come in for a few minutes to see and to talk to him and that should be enough. Even the doctor is saying that it would be really good for John to see some of his family soon. No, no, no way am I going there. I hate going to the hospital. And Philip is really busy with his job right now. We don't have the time or want to go and see John at the hospital right now. Are you sure? Also, there's the whole thing with his health getting even worse recently. So perhaps it's time we start preparing for the worst. Do you have any idea where John's bank information and checkbook might be? Do you know how much money he's ready to give away as inheritance? And do you know how much he has in terms of stocks right now? What? He's going to be kicking the can pretty soon here. So it's best we start preparing for his inheritance to come through. <laughs> I'm sure he's totally fine just having you at the hospital watching over him. So you can continue doing that if you want. I'll manage everything that has to do with his money and properties, all right? <laughs> Don't say something so messed up as that, Jenny. What do you mean? He's going to be kicking the can soon anyway. Right now, your father-in-law is trying his best to fight through his sickness. He is going to make it through this and come back home to see everyone really soon. So would you quit talking about he's going to die like that? I understand how you want to feel about all of this. I really do. But I think it's best that we prepare for the worst. Just in case. We wouldn't want to be wasting our time later on with all this. When we'll want to be focused on mourning him, right? You stop all that right now. There's no point in dealing with any of his money right now anyway, right? You're too busy to come and see him in the hospital, so you must be too busy to deal with any of that right now. So leave all of this talk about his inheritance be. Philip, where are you right now? I've been telling you to come to the hospital as quickly as you can. Your dad has finally gotten out of the hospital, but as soon as we got him home, he collapsed again. Do you have any idea what time it is? I get that it's an emergency for you, but come on. It's three in the morning for me. Once I've gotten my beauty sleep, I'll come to the hospital. I'm sure it's just the same old thing with him anyway, and he'll still be around for me when I get up. 
Once things are all handled over there and I'm awake from my sleep, I'll be over there. I'm not messing around right now, Philip. You get your button here right now and see your dad. He is not doing well at all, and his breathing is getting really shallow. I think this might be it for him. What? So please, hurry up and get to the hospital. This is not the time for you to be sleeping, all right? This might just be your last chance to ever talk to your dad again. Are you kidding me? In other words, this means my time has come as well. Excuse me? Uh, nothing, Mom. Don't worry about it. I'll be on my way to the hospital right now. I'm going out to the car right now, so just wait for me a little longer. Hey! Jenny! What the heck do you think you're doing? What do you think you're doing kicking me out of there like that? The funeral is going to be starting really soon, you know. Hurry up and let me back into this building right now. I'm sorry, Tina. There is a lot of appeal in this funeral for your son and I. So can you please just shut up and go home? Philip and I are going to be handling everything from now on. So you can go back home and mourn your husband in silence. Also, you happen to be in our way today. So please just get lost. I'm in the way? What the hell are you and Philip planning to do today with me? Not at my husband's funeral. I understand that Philip is the oldest of my kids, but he does not get to make the rules like that. Especially when he has no idea who all is going to be there for the funeral today. I'm sure he has no idea of what to expect. So don't worry about him. <laughs> what? And what is this about today having a big appeal to the both of you, huh? Do you both not understand that today is the funeral of my husband? Your guy's father? And I'm saying that because of today, we will have a lot of appeal to it. The CEO of the company has passed away. So now it's time for his oldest son, Philip, to take the reins and run the company. <laughs> In other words, today is the day for him to make a name for himself. Huh? Of course there will be plenty of other family members here today. But there's also going to be all sorts of bigwigs from all kinds of companies here to mourn your husband. So this is Philip's chance to make himself look good to all of them. And secure his future as the next CEO. And standing next to him today will be me, the CEO's wife. <laughs> I'm so glad. On a day like today, both Philip and I went to the salon before this and got ourselves looking all sharp and ready for what we have to show off today. So this is what you've both been waiting for all along. You both even went to the salon together before this and got your hair done and everything. Would you please cut the crap right now, Jenny? The point of this funeral is to mourn the loss of my husband. It is not a place for you and Philip to be showing off and trying to make yourselves look good for the business. I have no idea what's gotten into both of you. This funeral is meant to be a place where you need to appeal to all of those other company men. And the fact that Philip said it's his time as well now. Please do not ruin my husband's funeral like this just for your guy's selfish desires. The only person here that needs to cut the crap is you, Tina. Your husband just died on us. And the next person in power is going to be your oldest son, Philip. Do you really think it's okay for you to be talking to the most powerful man and his family's wife like that right now? Huh? I totally understand that you still have a lot of emotions flowing through you as your husband only just passed away. But could you please pull yourself back to reality for me? After your husband's gone, it's the oldest son's turn. And since this just happened... You are no longer the queen of the family. All you are now is some powerless old woman that we could honestly do better off without. <laughs> Excuse me? I'm sure the only reason you have all that confidence in yourself right now is due to the power that your husband gave you. But those days are over for you now. So please give it up and let us take the wheel. Your days of being the ruler in the family and telling me what to do have died. 
along with your husband's days of being the CEO. <laughs> and since when have I been telling you what to do, Jenny? Huh? Tell me when you haven't been. How about that? Telling me to come to see your husband as he was dying, even though I don't care for him, and telling me to bring my kids along to see him, even though his sickly body would have scared the crap out of them? Ha! Huh. Seriously. Every time you tried telling me to do things, it really pissed me off. It's a waste of time to go out and see some old geezers that's about to die. Why would I ever want to do that? <laughs> Do you really think that by having Philip and I there to talk to him and see him with you, he'd start to recover from whatever BS sickness he had? What? What the hell do you think you're saying right now? What do you think I'm saying? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> but not with words. <laughs> You'll just have to wait and see. Because right now, I can't handle you in that attitude anymore. The funeral is about to start soon as well, so I don't have time to waste on you. I know we were just getting to the good stuff, but that'll have to wait. I'm finally going to be the wife of a CEO, and I can't believe just how much I am smiling at a funeral. <laughs> what? The wife of a CEO? That's right. Remember that since now your husband is dead, he's going to be leaving a lot of money behind for us. So we're going to be taking all that money and everything, as well as taking over the company he's left for Philip. I thought that was pretty clear to you already, though. But anyway, once he's the CEO, I'm going to be the CEO's wife, right? Did you know that ever since I was a little girl, I had always wanted to be the wife of some super wealthy CEO. <laughs> so now that my dream is finally coming true for me, I just can't stop myself from smiling. I think I've had enough of you both. Especially you though, Jenny. Kicking me out of the funeral and then taking it over as though it's meant to be about you both. And not just that, but now you think you have access to all my husband's money and his company, which has led you to grin like some maniac. You really are such a shameless woman. Well now, I'm going to have to hide this smile for the time being and put on a more serious and saddened face to trick the masses. It would be pretty wrong for me to be smiling at a funeral of all places, right? <laughs> well, you've been pretty messed up this whole time, so why hide it at all? I'm trying to text Philip right now, but he seems to be ignoring me. For some reason, I'm getting the feeling that all this isn't going to play out in your guys' favor, though. Now, I'd like you to leave the premises at once and head back home with your mouth shut. For us, the CEO of the company has struck out. And the next up to bat is his oldest son. And me being his wife means that I'll become the wife of a CEO. Philip isn't even a part of the company. What? Yet you still believe that he's going to be able to get into the company and become the CEO of it right away? You must be so excited about becoming the wife of a CEO that you totally forgot about common sense. I'm sorry, but the next CEO of the company has already been decided. And of course, since Philip hasn't been working for the company at all, he is not going to be the CEO. If you understand that now, I want you to open the door for me and let me back inside. What the hell do you mean he's not been working for the company? Philip has told me that ever since he graduated from college, he's been working for his dad's company. And when was it that he told you that? It's been three years now since Philip was fired from his dad's company. Huh? He was fired? Yep. He was awful at all of the work he was left to do, and that really started to piss his dad off a lot. Of course, when he got fired, it was during a time where he was supposed to be taking care of a really important customer to the company. But he cried about having to do all that work and bolted from his responsibilities. That then pushed his dad over the edge, and he said he was no longer going to deal with Philip anymore. Although my husband's first thoughts were to make Philip the next CEO someday, those thoughts quickly disappeared, and the next thing he knew, he was firing Philip. What? Wait, 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 wait. I never heard anything about all those events. 
Also, Philip has been going to work like nothing's changed forever now. Perhaps right after being fired, he was able to find some other company that hired him. I'm not sure where he could be working now. But... But... But Philip is your guy's oldest son, right? And? And that means he should be next in line to take on the company from your husband. Nope. John has made it very clear to everyone at the company that the next person to be the CEO will be his son, Frank. Philip's little brother, John, told everyone that he couldn't trust his oldest son with taking on the company, so he'd be letting his second oldest handle everything next. Huh? He's letting Frank be the next CEO? And he told that to everyone in the company already? He even wrote that down in his will. What? You were the one that told me to start thinking about all of that while my husband was still in the hospital, right? About things like his inheritance and properties? I took that as meaning I did need to get on top of some of those things. So I went and started talking to John about everything he would be leaving behind. Also, when he was out of the hospital for a day, he got one of his lawyers to come over and we wrote a new will. And you're telling me that part of the will says for Frank to take over the company next? Unlike his dad, Frank is a very calm and composed man. But even so, he happens to be very good at doing business and has the proof to show for it. Even other employees within my husband's company say great things about how well he does his work. For a little while, he had only been working with his dad after Philip got fired, of course, and started learning what it means to lead a company. So this was always going to happen. Frank becoming the next CEO. But just to make sure there'd be no hiccups, we wrote it down in John's will. You're lying. There's no way the next CEO should be the oldest. And Philip is the oldest son to John. I've never even heard of an instance where the oldest was skipped and the next in line was given the company. Well, John had no other choice. His oldest was far less competent at his job than he had thought. Huh? I'm so happy that today Frank wasn't able to make it to the funeral. I'm sure he feels bad about having to be in New York for a business trip and all right now. But at least he doesn't have to be here when his stupid older brother and moron sister-in-law are right now. I'm sure if he was, then things would only become more messy for him. There's no way this is happening. Even Philip was saying that his time had come to me. He was so freaking excited to be the next CEO of his dad's company. Well, I can go tell him the truth right now for you. So please, let me inside the building. And honestly, I'm not going to worry too much about you both believing in a fairy tale because I want to focus on my husband's funeral. Everyone else is patiently waiting for the funeral to begin. So please, let me in right now. Wait, wait, wait. Who cares about the funeral right now? Philip and I are far more important at the moment. This is about my dream, after all. Right now, that dream is in danger of never coming true for me. So this is not the time for people to be worried about someone who's already dead. Well, if that seems to be the case for you, then I want you to go home right now. I'm not holding back anymore. I'm going to the front of the building right now, and I'll let the funeral director know that you no longer should be allowed in this funeral. Actually, I'll let them know that both you and my oldest son are not allowed in here. Then you both can be escorted out by them. Mom, what is all this about? Why am I not allowed to become the next CEO? It's not too late to make me the CEO yet. Tell Frank to let me be the CEO right now. That Frank happens to be the man your dad chose to make the CEO? He said so in his will. So I'm not going to just ask Frank to give up that role. His late father asked him to be in. The freaking will? Who cares what dad said? He's dead now. Why can't you just let me be the CEO now? It's not like he'll ever know that I was made the CEO, right? What are you talking about, Philip? I will not allow you to talk about your dad and his final words like that. But what's going on here is stupid. I know that dad fired me from the company in the past, but... But I just assumed that after dad died, you'd be willing to let me back into his company. 
I've believed this whole time that you would understand that the role of CEO should be going to the oldest son next. You're screwed up, Mom. I'm not the one that's screwed up. It's you and your wife that are. What the hell happened to telling your wife that you were fired three years ago? Why were you trying to hide all of that from her? I wasn't trying to hide anything from her. I just got lucky and made the money we needed from some slot machines. Slot machines? In other words, you gambled for the money you needed? Hold it right there. So you're telling me that you didn't even end up getting hired by another company after being fired? What the hell have you been doing ever since your dad fired you? I gave up on working and had been making all the money I needed from slot machines. I've been on a massive winning streak for a while now, so I brought in more than enough money to support both myself and Jenny. You are a dad, Philip. You have children. And yet you're telling me that this whole time you've been risking your whole family's future on some slot machines? What the hell have you been thinking? I... I thought that after Dad died, I'd be able to get back to work for his company. Hell, I thought I'd be back in his company long before he died. I thought that I, trying to act all sad and depressed around him, would get him to hire me back because he felt bad. Yet, for the past few years, he never talked to me, so I never had a chance to lie to him about how I was feeling. This year, he decided to get sick. It's not my fault that I had to continue gambling while dad was fooling around by not ever talking to me and then getting deathly ill. For Christ's sake. Yet now I have to sit here listening to you telling me that Frank is getting the company. If that's how things are going to be, then who cares about that stupid company? Just give me the dang money he's left for me and I'll shut up about everything. I'll make sure to use all the money I'm getting to continue my winning streak at the casino. Did you know that I've started to go into debt waiting for dad to get back to me about letting me work for him again. I've had to take out loans in order to keep playing the slots. If I don't start breaking even here, things are going to become really bad for me. You've been taking out loans now? I'm sure that Dad has loads of money in his savings that will be coming to me, right? Yeah, half will be going to you, of course, but the other half will be for his sons. But Frank is going to be getting the company. So you can give my part and his to me. He's not going to need any of that money, right? So give me that money. And while you're at it, give me whatever stocks he has as well. Philip, I have some very bad news for you. Your dad doesn't actually have all that much money left after he passed away. Huh? What the hell are you saying, Mom? There's no way he still doesn't have tons of money. He was the one that built the company and has been the CEO of it for over 40 years. You both happen to have that massive house, and he has multiple other properties. And what about all those high-end cars that he drives? How the hell are you able to tell me he doesn't have much of anything when he's got all of that? I'm sure you knew about how your dad ran his company all by himself, right? And of course, he has a lot of land and some pretty nice cars that he drove around a lot when he was younger. But over time, he has been putting all those things into his company, and now the cars and land are considered company assets. He left me with enough money to keep me happy, but the rest has all been put into the company and is not included in the will. <laughs> and what's going to happen with all the money I owe? I thought Dad would have hundreds of thousands to give me after he died. I just assumed that I'd be able to pay off all the loans after he died and be able to play more slots without going into any more debt. I thought this would be it for me, and I'd never have to worry about going into debt or having to work a job again. You can think about what you need to do next by yourself. If you can't find a way to help your family by yourself, then you open up to Brinley about the whole truth and have her help you. And as for that debt, well, you are the one that got yourself into that mess, so you're going to have to try something in order to pay it all off. I might be getting a lot of money from your dad, but it's only enough to keep myself happy through my later years. I have something I really need to ask from you, Tina. Can you please make Philip the CEO of the company? I'm sure that everyone within the company, as well as all the customers, want him to be the next CEO. 
I know for a fact if you don't make the oldest son the next CEO, then you'll be making the whole company look bad. Well, listen to this, Jenny. All of the employees within the company, as well as all the other businesses that our customers do, have asked for Frank to be the CEO. He's already been around all of them for years now. And every single person trusts that Frank can get the job done right. But, but there is one very important problem with Frank. He isn't even married yet. So what's going to happen to the company after he's passed away or retires? That's why right now you need to take this moment and make Philip the CEO of that company before it's too late. Huh? You're worried about what happens to the company after Frank? I'm sure that Frank might be good at the work he does, but he doesn't have a woman. And it seems like he never will. As far as I'm aware, he's never even had a girlfriend before, right? So there's no hope for him ever getting married now. And that means he's never going to have any kids who will be around to take on the company after him. But when it comes to your oldest son and his wife, they happen to have a really, really cute little boy, right? If you make Philip the CEO of the company right now, then there's hope that the company will continue on in this family's history. So you're trying to use your own son as a way of getting the company? Well, Jenny, did you know that you have no voice in telling Frank who he can and can't choose as the next CEO of the company? He doesn't have to give it to anyone in the family next. He has every right to pass it on to one of his best employees, or he might even want to sell the company to somebody else. So nobody, not myself, nor you, nor Philip, has any right telling him what to do with the company when he retires. I probably won't even be around by that point, so there's nothing I can do about it. No. No way. I've heard about the debt your husband is in right now. I understand that you and him are trying to do everything you can to get any money left by my husband, but you need to give it up. Don't tell us to give up like that. It's not as simple as you might think. Right now, our lives are on the line. Right now, Philip is in debt $30,000 to loan sharks. Really? That much? You have to do something to help us pay all of it off. This is your son's debt we're talking about. Also, I happen to be suffering a lot because of it. So, as my mother-in-law, you need to help me. Please. You shut the hell up right now, you complaining witch. You are both freaking adults now with children and need to learn how to take responsibility for yourselves. I don't give a crap about that guy's debt, and I never will. Also, he happens to be your husband. So do your dang job and support him through this tough time. Back when my husband was building his company, he got into a hundred thousand worth of loans, and we worked together to pay all of that off. So you can handle thirty thousand, you baby. You might have been able to handle all that, but I can't. I might be his wife, but I just can't. Then go ahead and divorce the sad loser. It's your freaking life after all, so you decide what you want with it. Now, that's it from me. I can sympathize with you for all the crap you're going through right now, but you have to take responsibility for it and handle it. But, but wait, wait, Tina. Are you going to leave the both of us? Aren't you going to help us out? At least a little? You know dang well I'm leaving you both. I hate you guys with every bit of my heart. What? You tried to kick me out of my husband's funeral. You then went around smiling about the fact that you could use his funeral to make yourselves look good. I don't plan on ever forgiving either one of you for something as cruel as that. Yet now you're asking for my help? Absolutely not. Uh, no. Wait, Tina? That was, um... No, I'm going now. I don't hold any of this against my little grandkids you've given to me, but you and Philip deserve to receive all of my hate. So I really hope that you two can figure something out for their sakes. And after that, those two idiots went to Frank, begging for him to help them on their hands and knees, while they both sobbed and sobbed. So, being the kind and reserved man that he is, Frank went and brought them into one of the factories he started to run. At first, both Philip and Jenny weren't given a very good wage or much time off from work, and they complained about it a lot. Philip would even take it up to the factory's manager at times and say that he was the brother of the CEO and deserved better. 
To which the manager would reply, saying that the CEO gave him permission to fire those two at any time he wanted. After saying that, Philip never once complained about the job again, and both he and Jenny have continued their work in that factory. According to some rumors, that manager actually went to school with Jenny, where she would bully him all the time. So, who's to say for sure what kind of hell he's putting her through right now there? Well, as for the time being, those two idiots are going to be sweating their butts off for years to come, trying to make whatever money they can in order to pay off Philip's debt.